In this episode, we are going to take a look at closure spec and how it can be used to parse DSLs. So as an example, we are going to use Hiccup DSL and Hiccup is a closure DSL for describing HTML. So for example, an H1 tag would look like a vector of at least one element, which is a keyword H1. Then we have optional map of attributes and optional child elements such as strings, numbers, or other hiccup elements. And to parse and compile this DSL, we are going to use a closure spec library just because it can be used to destructure data structures into more verbose representation. You can think of it as an IST of data. And closure spec is a good fit for it because it provides a set of predicates which can be used to describe data and helper functions to validate and um, destructure data. So if we take a look at hiccup, we can see that at top level, it can be either a hiccup element or a string or a number. So let's define a specification which will be used to describe this top level form of the element. For this, we are going to use def macro from spec uh, namespace. And instead of uh, passing it a symbol, it expects to receive namespaced keyword, which then will be used to register this spec globally. So it can be used in other namespaces without requiring it. So we will use namespace hiccup and create a form specification. Also, we will use or macro, which allows us to describe different possible options. So first, the element can be a string, for example. The first item in a pair here is a keyword which is a label of some specification and specification here for a string is a standard closure predicate string. Next we'll use number and finally it can be also an element, right? And an element is another specification which is a specification of hiccup element itself. Okay, let's create specification for an element and here we'll use a function, sorry, macro that is used to describe a shape of the data that represents a sequence. Cat accepts pairs of, again, labels and predicates or specifications. And here we can use special rejects operators like optional, zero or more, and so on. So here we have the same, but for data structures. Here we can see that in a sequence which represents a hiccup element, the first element is a tag. And this tag is represented as a keyword. Then we have a map of attributes, which is optional. So here we will use optional operator and map predicate. And then we have children, which is zero or more. So we will use star operator. And children can be, again, a form, not just hiccup element, because we can have both strings and numbers as child elements. So here we define recursively that children can be any of the specified forms of an element. So now we can try to validate a hiccup form against the specification. We can use valid predicate from spec namespace, and then pass it a specification and some hiccup. So we can see that it is valid. And then we can use conform function to destructure the data according to the shape that is described in the specification. So we can see that we have an element with tag H1, it has these children. So you can see that those labels in a destructure form corresponds to exact same labels in a specification. So here we can add more data and see the result. Okay. So now we can use this, for example, to compile hiccup into HTML stream. Let's move this into the function. So now we want to build a compiler for this EST and we'll use for this multi-methods and we'll dispatch on labels that are defined in specification. Let's define a multi-method, call it HTML and we will dispatch on a label which comes as a first item in a destructure sequence. So we'll use first function. Okay, let's create a method for string, for example first. So we don't need to compile string in any way. So we'll just return a string. Next, we want to provide a compilation method for number. And finally, method to compile the element. 
So an element is a map of keys tag, attributes, and children. Let's build HTML3. So because tag is a keyword, we need name of that keyword, and then closing tag, again the name of the keyword, and then we need to compile children. We'll do it recursively and then join them. Okay. Okay, so let's test it. Yeah, we got a string. So this is one of the use cases for closure spec. It also can be used to provide specifications for functions, for example, to validate arguments and return values, and also generate data from the specification. If you want to learn more, go to closure.org website, where you can find more information about spec with examples and API reference.